Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome electric guitar soloing lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which we're going to go crazy and play some innovative, outside-the-box bending lines. We're going to squeeze bending for all it's worth, literally squeeze bending for all it's got, because you can create some interesting expressions using bending that are beyond just blues bending and country bending. Okay, so just to get a hint of what I mean. Okay. This is heavily influenced by Steve Morse and Greg Howe, two legendary innovators. And um, this is my way to express this. Then I'm going to walk you through all the techniques, and then you're going to take it and make it your own. <laughs> And that's, you know, just general improvisation. If I play it again, it comes out completely differently. Let me show you what I mean, okay? The first lick that I played, the bending lick I mean, was 5-8 and then 7 bend to 8 on the second string. So it's 5-8-7 and you bend 7, but you only bend it half a tone, okay? So it's... And every time you play it, you can play it differently. You can play it as staccato notes. You can just pick everything. You can play it as legato. You can do a hammer on, pull off, okay? Five, eight, and then pull off the seven and then bend it, okay? You can create different expressions. You can bend slowly, you can bend faster. You can even bend the eight and then pull off the seven and bend it. Okay. You can also bend to five and then bend that. Okay. You can play legato bending. Okay, something like this. Which is reminiscent of using a whammy bar, okay? Um, so that's only the beginning. Now you can bend seven on the second string and then do what I did um, when I demonstrated the, the concept and play single notes on the next string. Okay, you can bend seven on the second string and while bending it, you can inter, intersperse um, eight and seven on the first string. Okay, so you play the second string and then the first string, the second string and then the first string, and you change between eight and seven on the first string while still bending seven on the second string. It might sound complicated when I talk it out, but it's actually pretty simple. Now, if you play it slowly, um, it sounds detuned, but that detuning of the bend is actually a nice characteristic of the bending itself. Okay, let me let me show you. Okay, again. Uh -huh. Right? That's the way you make the bending speak, okay? Because you don't really have to keep the same note. You can unbend, you can detune it, you can rebend it, okay? So when you play seven on the second string and you bend it, and you play eight on the first string, the next time you play the second string, you can rebend or unbend a little, okay? Let me show you again. And then at the end, you can bend seven all the way to 10, okay? Oh, sorry. Hey, you can even detune it and bend it even a little bit more, a little bit over 10, 
Okay, this is the beauty of it. This gets it this wild sound. Now I want to remind you of the guitar giveaway that I'm holding. I'm giving away a Journey Instruments Puddle Jumper to one new member of my courses program. I have a new courses platform with over 12 courses waiting for you there right now. Okay, from ear training to rhythm mastery to theory unlocked, finger style technique toolbox, acoustic soloing, electric soloing, arrangement training, fretboard vision, okay, cultivating the way that you visualize music on the fretboard. It's all there, over 50 hours of courses waiting for you. Join, and at the end of the summer, you might win an acoustic guitar. You might win a puddle jumper. Okay, so go to lickandref.com slash courses and check it out and enroll and I'll see you on the other side. Now, this bending trick... Okay, you can do practically anything you want with it. You can bend eight on the second string and play uh, eight and ten on the first string. Okay? Or you can, do, uh, you can do the same concept on the second and third strings. You can bend seven on the third string and play eight and seven on the second, or eight and 10, okay? Or even eight and nine if you want to detune it even more. Okay? Now, the cool thing that you probably already know is that when you bend seven on the third string, you get the note that is on five on the second string. So instead of doing this, okay, which we all know and love, you can play four on the second string instead. And that way you get the blue note. So you actually surpass it when you bend seven on the third string and then you play it. So you get a lower note than the bend. Okay, and then you can continue playing a blues line. Now, what I played was just changing between five and four on the second string. Now, you can play a note and then bend the fret below it. Okay, just like you did with eight and seven on the second string, you can also do it with five and four on the third string, okay? Okay, this gives it a really nice effect. Now, you can actually do this anywhere, okay? If you want, to, let's say, to outline a chord, Okay, if you have E minor on seven, so you um, you have okay. Anytime you have a half tone, you can use this trick. Okay, so I was playing nine. Uh, so, sorry, I was playing seven nine on strings four and three. And then I played 7, 8 on the second string, and I pulled off back to 7, and I bent it to 8. This is a very useful trick. Now, another thing that I did was a Greg Howe triple bend. Okay, you can, um, you can slide a bend. So you have 7, 8, and 10 on the second string. Okay, you can just go up a scale, okay, that way. Okay, I, I just played 5, 7, 8, 10, and 12, right? And you can go down if you want. Okay, as long as you can keep the sustain going. Um, just don't overdo it, okay? It's really nice when it's a surprise, okay? Just as another tool. And this uh, little thing I did on 10, I bent it all the way up to 13 or even 14, okay? And then I played a lower note on the, the first string, okay? I played eight on the first string. And this gives me, again, this, this, melodic line instead of playing the same note. Okay, 
Hey, just to take it to its, to its logical extreme. Okay, so um, you can do this anywhere, anywhere, literally anywhere. Um, and the more used to it you get, uh, the easier it gets. Because again, you can really go crazy. The idea, of course, is to be subtle and just use it every now and then. But as I demonstrated, you can take it overboard and just own it. Just own this overt bending. Now, the final trick that I want to show you is something actually from Hotel California, uh, which is this. Uh, okay? Um, where you bend one string and then unbend the next string. So you need to get your finger over that second string. So it's bending 10 on, let's stay on the same, uh, the same scale, okay? Um, bending 10 on the second string and then I'm playing 8, 9, 10 on the first string and I bend it and then I wrap my finger over the second string, I play the bent 10 on the second string. It sounds complicated, but it's not complicated. It's tricky, okay? It's, it's a completely different thing. It's not complicated because it's pretty straightforward. It's tricky because you need to bend and wrap your finger over the next string, okay? That's what you need to get under your fingers, the next string. Okay, and, and so on. It's just fun to sit around at home and just try to see what you can get away with bending wise. Okay, because you might stumble on an entirely new way to express bending on the instrument. So thanks to Steve Morse and Greg Howe, we have several uh, bending expressions that we can steal. Um, and you might discover the next one. So... Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in my courses program, lickandref.com slash courses, and in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.